Hello everyone and welcome back. So, we have returned for the Season 1 Episode 3 Access is Power review of Snowpiercer. Apologies for this being quite late, I've been recovering from a quite an interesting night out for the past few days. Anyway, a large theme of this episode is the idea of isolation, with the train almost being used as a metaphor for this. The title Access is Power is in reference to the ending, and to it in the literal meaning, that the more access you have and the higher up the train you are, the more powerful you are. Leighton's ring reinforces this idea that to get access you have to trade, and holds up the theme of possessions that was created at the beginning of the episode. I also find what Commander Grey says to be quite interesting, almost as if he is starting to see through Melanie's lies, which it makes sense that someone would be starting to pick up on the fact that Wilfred never leaves the front. I mean, he's basically a god in other parts of the train, so I understand that sometimes it just wouldn't add up. Jinju, Till's partner, ends up spilling the beans that Nikki is awake, and it turns out that she is coming off of the suspension drug, which has similar effects of coming off of Chrono. And turns out that our resident doctor traded the suspension drug, allowing those in the black market to create a street version, resulting in the creation of Chrono. I also want to mention the fact that Melanie has no interest in harming those in the tale, whether that is simply due to labour or whether she cares more than she lets on is up for debate. This can be observed in the scene where Melanie hits Bennett for insinuating that she, they should decouple the tail. Also, Leighton finds out that Miles has made the apprenticeship program and uses that as an excuse to go see Josie at the end of the episode. This brings us to Fight Night, a night put on basically to distract everyone, and we get our first introduction of Wilfred, with Mulaney manipulating a recording of his voice to fake an announcement. Also, after a statement from the head brakeman, we know that Wilfred was indeed a real person. What happened to him after departure is still unknown though. We also get to meet either the head or one of the heads of the black market on the train, Terence, who is played by Sean Tube, who actually played Jensen in Iron Man in 2008, which is quite cool to see. We learn that Sean Wise came to Terence with the bodyguard of the rich family in first class to buy Chrono from him. At the time, I wasn't too sure whether it was the bodyguard or LJ that did the killing, as she clearly knew that Nikki was innocent mentioning it when her mother asks what she's doing out. All of this brings us to the end. With the bodyguard, I'm actually unsure of his name as I can't find him in the cast list, but he ends up killing those guarding Nikki, then probably kills Nikki off screen, with of course, as mentioned, Leighton passing a biometric scanner to Josie, meaning at some point she will be able to move up the train with the tailies. Although a lot was going on in this episode, it really didn't feel like it. This episode had a massive tonal shift from the last two. It felt apparent that LJ's character in The Bodyguard would have a much bigger role, due to the amount of press done around LJ's actress Annalise Basso. So it felt obvious that this was coming, and didn't turn out to be that big of a twist. We also already know that this show has been confirmed for a season two, which feels a little premature, but there was always two seasons planned anyway. Anyway everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and check out my Snowpiercer playlist, as well as my The 100 Season 7 playlist, if you watch The 100 of course. Thank you everyone, and I will see you in the future. Bye.